Hi, everybody. This is Neil Thompson, founder of Teach the Geek. It's an online platform for STEM professionals. The first offering of the platform is an online public speaking course called Teach the Geek to Speak. To learn more about the course, please go to teachthegeek.com. Again, that's teachthegeek.com. It's Tuesday, and as in past Tuesdays, it's Teach the Geek Tuesday. And what I thought about talking about today is a way to engage an audience. Now, I know that whenever you want to give a speech or presentation, you want to impart information to people. But people don't often just listen to rote information being spoken to them, especially if it's being done in a dry way. A great way to engage an audience is to tell a story and weave that data into the story. Making sure the story has a clear beginning, middle, and end is so important. You can probably remember when you were a kid and your parent, perhaps your parents read you bedtime stories. I believe mine did. I don't remember, but kids get bedtime stories read to them by their parents. <laughs> And I'm sure you really enjoyed those bedtime stories when you were a child. If that doesn't really change when you become an adult. I mean, obviously, you're not getting bedtime stories read to you when you're an adult. But just listening to stories from, from other people, whether it be at work or outside of work, you, you, tend to you tend to want to listen. And when I think about telling a story, as I mentioned, having a clear beginning and end, so what, what exactly does that mean? So with the beginning, I always suggest asking a question. And the reason I do that is because it, it builds up suspense and, or intrigue as to what's to come next. So that's, that's, a, that's a really good thing to do, just to kind of get people interested in what you're about to say, as opposed to making a statement, ask a question. And then when it comes to the actual meat or the body of your speech, I've always been a proponent of, of not using notes and, or not reading your speech from, from a sheet of paper, because that requires you to then look down at the paper and you're not looking up at the audience. And when you're not looking at them, they can tend to kind of lose interest in what you're saying. So you perhaps you ask a great question, but then you go into looking at a page on a sheet, then you lost their interest. And, you, and then basically your speech is for nothing because no one's listening to the speech anymore, or not as many people as you'd like are listening to the speech. So a great way to to be able to look at the audience while speaking and not have to look down at a sheet of paper is when you're practicing your speech, have bullet points. So the bullet points are your main points of your speech. So you wanna make sure that you, remember, you memorize what those bullet points are supposed to be. And then for every point that comes beneath each bullet point, I guess what you can call a sub bullet point, you wanna memorize those as well. As long as you memorize your main points and then your bullet points, you should be able to expound or expand on each of those things, the, the, the bullet points and the sub bullet points. That requires no memorization of the actual words of your speech. All it requires is the memorization of those bullet points and sub bullet points. You should, as I said, you should be able to expand on, on those points from there, especially if you know the subject really well. I actually was recently looking at a video of a person I used, well, a person that I know, she's now a professor and she was giving a speech to people on her research topic. And she was using notes. And I remember thinking to myself, why is she using notes? I mean, this is her research topic. She spent years working on this particular topic. She knows it inside and out. There's really no need for her to use notes at all. All she really needs is to have her main points memorized and her sub points memorized, and she should be able to go from there. And I think her speech would have been a lot more effective if she was able to, to do that as opposed to always having to look at these notes. And I'm sure it was just a crutch, these notes in her hand, because I'm certain that when she looked at the notes, she knew exactly what was there, because she wrote it, and she knew what order that the notes or what her presentation had to go in because she knows her research topics so well. The notes really weren't necessary. Get rid of those notes, so basically that's what I'm saying. And then with the ending, I'm a big proponent of Referring back to something you said earlier in your speech, so something near the beginning. So it really ties a nice bow on the whole presentation when you refer back to something that you, that you spoke about earlier as opposed to saying, well, my speech is done. I'm going to get off the stage now. <laughs> Oftentimes, that's the, the part of a presentation that I work on the most. Once I come up with the question at the beginning, I know what the meat of the presentation is going to be. I know what the, po the bullet points and the sub bullet points are going to be. And after that, it's how do I tie this, this, this presentation up 
with something that I referred to earlier and make it and you know try to make it clever. That's that's that, that's the tough part, and that's actually I spend quite a bit of time trying to figure out what that ending is going to be based on figuring out what I'm going to refer to that that I spoke about in the in the beginning of the speech. And I, it, it's gone to great effect. I, I, frankly, I always feel pretty clever when I come up with something interesting to say at the end. You know, I was giving a speech recently, and I mentioned at the beginning of the speech that I wasn't going to use notes. And it was the first time that I wasn't going to use notes. So that the last thing that I said at the end of the speech was, hopefully you didn't miss the notes. And, that's, and that was the ending of my speech. So you see, I, I referred back to something that I had said earlier. So I'm a big proponent of that. So that's basically, you know, coming up with a speech, a clear beginning, middle, and an end. Uh, it will be, your audience will definitely appreciate it because your speech will be easier to follow. It'll be interesting. You'll keep their attention. They won't go on their phones. They won't stare off into space. They'll actually listen to what you have to say. So try that out and let me know what, how it works out. So that's Teach the Geek Tuesday. Again, my name is Neil Thompson. I'm the founder of Teach the Geek. It's an online platform for STEM professionals. The first offering of the course is a public speaking course called Teach the Geek to Speak. To learn more about the course, please go to teachthegeek.com. Again, that is teachthegeek.com. Until next time, please take care.